Now, I know it's been a few weeks since my last upload, but I can assure you, I have been on that grind. But let's get into it. So today I'm going to be machining some parts for my old FRC robotics team. They have a CNC router, but these parts need a little bit more precision going into them, so they're more suited for this CNC mill. Now if you aren't too familiar with machining, in my experience it's about 80% setup, 10% machining, and 100% crying. Step one is to program the part. Now, watching me at a computer is going to be painful for the both of us, so I'm just going to skip documenting that part of the process. Step two is setting up tools. For most of our aluminum end mills, we already have them pre-shrunk up in heat shrink holders so they're always at the ready. But for the drills, taps, and thread mills I'm going to need for this job, I'm going to have to use ER collet holders. ER collets, unlike heat shrink holders, grip over a variety of ranges of diameters. This allows them to be a bit more versatile, but they will have more run out and less gripping strength. But for our cases, they're good enough. The process of loading tools into the machine is pretty simple. All you're doing is calling up the tool pocket from the tool changer, loading it into the spindle, and then measuring the length of the tool using the tool probe. But if you edit this in a certain way, it can look more fun than it actually is. Now, step three is work holding for OP1. OP1 work holding is normally pretty simple, since you're just grabbing onto raw stock, with no real need for precision. So, in this case, because I'm using a scrap sluggo of two and a quarter inch bar stock, I will be using a three jaw chuck to hold this. This will allow me to easily load round stock into the mill. And then I'll be happy because it is a mill part and not a lathe part. Step four is establishing work coordinate systems. The machine needs to know where in the travels the part is located. In this machine it is pretty easy because it has a tool probe. I can easily touch off on four points on the circle to establish the X and Y position and then touching down in Z to tell me where the height is. Step 5 is to start machining OP1. This is a pretty simple part, but there's a few details we need to consider. There needs to be a precision bore in the center here for a bearing, so I'll have to use Cutter Comp to dial this in. Cutter Comp allows me to offset the tool path to cut more or less material. I'm not able to add more material, so I'll start with some positive comp to cut the bore undersized. Then I will measure the part and offset accordingly, and rerun the toolpath to get my desired dimension. This part also features blind threads, so I will have to rigid tap with a bottoming tap or thread mill them. The coolant gear running in this machine isn't great for rigid tapping, and the spiral flute bottoming tap I would need to use would be especially weak. So I'm going to thread mill these. Thread milling is a process of using a form tool with a thread profile on it to 3D interpolate a thread profile into the parts. I will use the same process of dialing in cutter comp until I get the desired thread fit. Now that I have all the OP1 features machined into this piece of raw stock, I'm going to have to take it to the manual lathe to remove all this extra material.
is freed from the raw material, it's time to get on to OP2. So we are back to the work holding step. Work holding for OP2 is always a bit more tricky. In this case, I need to grip on this finished round diameter. Now a three jaw chuck won't quite work for this based on how thin it is and how I don't want to mark up the surface. So what I'm going to do is use some aluminum soft jaws that I'm going to machine the profile the part into to hold on to it. Now we're back to the work cornet system. Uh, when I machined the bore, I made sure to machine it deep enough where I could use that precision bore to locate my part in X and Y. The Z value on this part isn't very critical, so I used just the value I used to cut the soft jaws for my Z. On both of the parts up too, I start by machining out the studs that interface with the wheel. On the first part, I need to drill and tap some holes. But because these are not blind, shallow holes, I'm able to start them with a plug tap. Now, if you aren't familiar with rigid tapping, it's magic. Or it is a cycle that will synchronize the spindle RPM with the feed rate in Z to match the pitch of the threads. For the second part, I need to orientate the threaded holes from the first op when I go into the second operation, so that they are in the right place in the studs. To achieve this, all I use is an alignment pin when I load it into the soft jaws. Oh, and I'm forgetting to mention just one thing. Chamfer every edge. If you're making parts in a CNC and not chamfering every edge... Stop it. Get some help. The burring by hand is for suckers. There's a few more parts that go into this assembly, but based on how long it's taken me to film all of this, I should probably just get to work and making them.